ha, 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 I have you now, you Spanish landlubbers. Oh, well, maybe not this round. You guys are lucky I have to film an episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Parmigan. In this week's episode, we're going to complete that Firelock Games ship kit bashing, where we were going to build a schooner. So this is the finished product right next to me here. Uh, and really, in this episode, we're going to cover the top of the boat. So in the last episode, we did the base. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to complete the top of it, the sails, the rigging, uh, the masts, and uh, briefly talk about a little bit about the flag. Uh, but uh, that's essentially what we're going to do in this episode. Uh, so re just a reminder that this ship was made from four other Firelock Games ships. So the parts that were left over, uh, I kind of built variations of boats and there was leftover parts. And, and of course, the galleon build was a, a disaster my first time around uh, that I had to, to strip all the parts off and redo it. And we did that on this channel, actually. Uh, so I had lots of leftover parts. And uh, I figured I would make something different. I, I originally was going to just make a, a terrain piece, a damaged boat, and figured I could easily make that with all those parts. But when I started putting it together, I realized that, you know what, I could do an entire boat. Uh, and I know that there isn't a schooner, and I really wanted to build one. And I said, you know what, can I, can I build it with the parts I had? Uh, and uh, I was really happy with the end result. I had everything I needed, uh, and if I didn't, well, let's just say I fabricated it uh, out of crafting material. Of course, there's a lot of foam, balsa wood, other stuff in here. Uh, I got jewelry from Michaels, everything I could find to uh, complete this project. So I'm really happy with the end result. So let's just take a look, quicker look at it. Uh, just a quick look of the uh, finished product. So you can see we added some uh, little beasties, some sea monsters on here. On the back here, we added some octopus and starfish. So they're really a, a sea monster motif going on in this boat here. Uh, added rat lines for the very first time. Um, I, I like this so much that I'm probably going to go back and add it to my other boats that I've completed already. Um, it was fairly challenging, but it was actually not as tough as I thought it was going to be. Uh, and I was really happy with the end result. So definitely that's a detail I'm going to add from now on to all my ships. Uh, and I, I didn't do it in all three. I just did it in the center. Uh, but uh, I think it adds a lot to the boat. Uh, all right. So that's pretty much it for what we're going to do uh, as far as building and painting in this episode. Uh, but we have a special treat to, today. We're going to be looking at uh, some product from Cigar Box Battle. So I really want to thank... Uh, take the time here to thank Corey and the team from a cigar box battle for sending over these amazing battle mats to the plunder den. So today we're going to look at the Caribbean Island, uh, which is a really fantastic, uh, battle map here. I'm just going to put that picture up right. So you can see what it looks like. So this is what we're going to be looking at the Caribbean Island. It's a four by six, uh, fleece mat. Again, made by Cigar Box Battle. And uh, we're going to take a deeper dive and go to the table and uh, look at all the different features. All right, so here's a close-up. You can see all the great detail. Uh, it, like I said, this is a, like a fleece material. So it's not very... Uh, some people might be concerned that it's uh, raised a little bit too much on the material. It's not. It's really smooth, uh, which is great for sliding uh, your ships and or your miniatures over, uh, or whatever game you might be playing. Uh, so it's it's very smooth and easy to move things around on. So this is a nice feature that I really like about this mat is I'm able to add hills underneath it. So you're able to because it's a, a material, you can add things on there. So I just cut some insulation foam there and uh, put them in like a hill shape and stick it under the mat and you got these nice uh, hills so this is kind of a real advantage over the other mats i have that are kind of solid in uh, one shape i'm not able to add hills or other other things to them so i really really like this uh, feature so you can see i got a nice steep hill going down there uh, and if you sand it nice uh, your miniatures sit on it uh, easy no problem so this is another feature that I really like. It's uh, portable. 
So the other mats you can roll up and put them in a in a, a carrying case, but you have to carry another carrying case. This is uh, something that I can fold up, stick in my luggage bag. You know, if I'm going to Adepticon or going to a game conference here, I can uh, just fold this up, throw it in my backpack, or put it in my luggage, and it's easy to carry around. And uh, I understand they have a double sided mat too, as well. So you can get two two types of games uh, in one mat, which is really cool as well. So just wanted to zoom in some of the uh, look at some of the details. So they got the rock formations, and, and I, I can't believe it uh, that this is material and and the detail that they can get on it. It's it's really really fantastic, uh, and I really really uh, recommend this mat. Really fantastic, and I can't wait to play uh, some matches on it. All right, let's go back up. What do you guys think about that amazing mat? I really encourage you to check out their website and look at all the different mats they carry. Uh, they pretty well make a mat for any game you can think of. Uh, with the upcoming uh, Raise the Black and uh, Blood and Steel, I'm definitely going to be there to uh, pick up some mats from Cigar Box Battle. Uh, they definitely have what I need. Um, so I really encourage you to check that out. I'll put a link to their uh, website down below in the description. All right, everyone. If you like what we're doing here on the Planet Inn, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Inn and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start painting and let's start crafting. All right, so this is pretty much how I started. Uh, kind of went over and surveyed all the pieces that I had from the different uh, ships. Um, obviously, they're going to need some cleanup here. Some of these are in pretty bad shape, uh, and they have some paint left on them, and they're a little chipped from uh, all that hot glue I had on there. So I'm just going to have to take some sandpaper and uh, clean clean them up first. And then we're going to have to lay them all out and see what we have and uh, see what we can build with this. So on the schooner, it has. Uh, I decided to do a three mast schooner, uh, and when I'm looking at pictures, uh, historical pictures of them, the masts are usually very similar to the same size all the way across. I made. I decided to make the middle a little bit taller, kind of where the flag's going to be, uh, but other than that, uh, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, and I decided to add that fighting top. So there probably wouldn't be a fighting top necessarily, or if there was, it'd be a really small one. So I decided to add that on there. And, uh, you know, I, the majority of the pieces were available within the pieces I had, but I, I definitely had to craft a few things to uh, complete this. Again, there's no blueprint, just kind of working it out. I've built enough uh, of these ships that I kind of have a good idea of how it should be put together. So I used uh, white tacky glue uh, to glue this together. And if you can believe it, this is the first time I've ever actually used that for a ship build, which I, I have no idea why I've never used this in the past. I've always used super glue and other stuff, so it's just really solid. Uh, but this stuff works great, uh, great, especially on this kind of wood. Um, this uh, You just need white tacky glue, and this works fantastic. So just measuring it out and making sure that they're the right size. Uh, the real tricky part is... Uh, is making sure everything's level across the ship. Uh, because of the ship body I took is from the Corvette, there's different levels uh, of heightness uh, where the masts stick in. So uh, you got to want to make sure that it looks uniform. So it's a little tricky, and I had to stick it in the ship there. Uh, so I'm just uh, kind of showing you uh, different steps of where I'm at. I'm kind of gluing these pieces and letting them dry uh, while I start other pieces. I kind of just went back and forth between all the masks, and and you know, it, frankly, this tacky glue dries pretty quick. So, yeah, you know, and you got you know, you got a few minutes here to play around with it and adjust it, and you can uh, see if it's the right size. So I kind of had to make this little cradle <laughs> uh, for the mass on the bottom. Uh, I mean, the for where the sails are going to be held. I didn't really have the pieces for that, so I kind of had to make that or create that of the pieces I did have. Uh, and then the uh, where the uh, it kind of slants further up where the sail is, I didn't really have any pieces, so I kind of totally had to manufacture those. So just kind of showing you those uh, pieces completed. You can see I put that one end on there. That's the back of the ship. That's where the rigging is going to attach on the back, and I also had it on the very front. 
And I just used those little circle craft pieces, and that's kind of how I added a little more support on the upper part because I, I just said I didn't have any attaching pieces there. But otherwise, everything else was available in the parts I had left over. So again, building this, I really wanted to may have a make it feel like it was a Farlock Games ship, like it fits in the Blood and Plunder world. Uh, so I wanted to use as many of the pieces as I could uh, from the ships that I had. I tried to stay away from as much crafting supplies as I possibly could. But, you know, obviously there's certain things that I had to put in there to uh, create the same effect. So now moving into washes, I used a strong tone and dark tone. I usually cover them all in the dark tone first and then put the strong tone over top. It gives it a nice aged wood look to it. Uh, I love uh, using those. Um, I pretty well use it on all my ship builds. I put that down first on there. Uh, and it really looks cool with uh, where I sanded it and all that little bit of leftover paint on there. It, it really adds a lot to it. Uh, I noticed that when I did my uh, previous build, the uh, Sloop of War, uh, and I was using some galleon parts. Uh, I really liked uh kind of made an aged look. Really like that. So now I'm going to paint the mast as I usually do. I got white, black, uh, and the two reds. Now, there's different color schemes depending on the ship that I'm attached to, but this ship is white, black, and a little bit of red, so that's what I'm going to carry up into the uh, mass and paint them up. All right, so this is after I finished painting it. I didn't uh, show you that in the video. It's it's just, you know, I pick different, uh, make sure that they're level across, so all the white is the same across and, and all the pieces are uniformed. I just gives it kind of a, a more uh, standardized look to it. Uh, so I'm just showing you I finished all that up. And I painted, I, sorry, I glued those masts into the base of the boat. Because it's foam, you can't just keep pulling them in and out. So I unfortunately couldn't make this portable. I had to glue those masks right in. Uh, and it's a one-shot deal, right? Uh, because of the foam that it's sitting in. All right, so now I'm just showing you the rigging. This is how I kind of do it. I go from one side... Uh, and then I flip the ship around and go to the other side. So you're kind of tugging back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I don't like to rig the whole one side because it's just tugging too much on the other side. Uh, and I'm just showing you where I'm adding uh, that rigging. So this is after I've done the first step. You can see I've gone on both sides. And I'm just showing you the uh, pattern that I uh, rig my ship in. Every, I'm sure there's uh, people that have all sorts of different ways of doing it. Uh, but this is how I like to do it. Uh, it's just kind of balanced uh, back and forth. I find if I pull it on the one side, it, some things just go a little crooked. <laughs> it doesn't look quite right. So uh, I like to go back and forth. So there's an even amount of tugging on both sides of the boat. All right, so now I'm uh, adding those rat lines. So really, those are just pieces of uh, leftover string uh, or the uh, rigging that comes with those kits. And I just I glued them on. Uh, I know that uh, people tie them on and all sorts of stuff like that. But, you know, this white glue just it disappears, right? It goes clear. Uh, and you can't even notice it. Uh, it looks, uh, looks good. I, re I really like this. And I'm going to use this technique going forward and probably look at some of my other ships and redo them. So just measuring the sails. It's a little tricky. Uh, that middle one's a little different because of that fighting top I put in there. Uh, and really, I just measure it out and then draw them out on that card stock. I'm kind of making templates uh, that I'm going to trace onto the material. I, didn't, I don't like drawing right onto the material. It's a little hard to measure out on there, so I'd rather make a little template and trace it onto the material. It's a lot easier. So this is that material I use, uh, Fabric Creations. I got it at Walmart. Uh, they have a pre-cut fabric in their in their craft area, uh, and uh, that's all I use. So there, I've fabricated or I've cut out all the different shapes and sizes of sails that I need uh, by measuring the boat, uh, and I'm just going to trace all these templates onto this uh, piece of fabric. So I don't double up the fabric. I just use the one side, mainly because I want the craft paint, uh, paint to uh, leak through that and uh, make it more solid. So this is a, kind of the color I use, vintage white. I use a little bit of an off-white before I add white onto it, just to add a, some, a little fading on the corners and stuff. And I've used a, a tote lid. 
Uh, it's better if you get a toad lid that's a little smooth, but on the top here, it's a little texturized, which is great. Uh, it'll be easier for it to pull off afterwards. What I've learned from doing it on smooth surfaces, it gets, sometimes it gets really stuck to it and it's hard to pull off. All right, so this is how I do the billowed cells on the top. I put them on a ball. You've seen me do this in other videos, so I'm just briefly discussing it. So I just use it exactly, and I've kind of lipped the corner. But actually, because I put it on that texturized part of the lid, it actually came off, like, super easy. Uh, and it actually left texture on the inside. So that's another thing. If you do it on these lids and you have a smooth side, it's smooth on one side, and it's textured on the other side. So you have to go back and texture it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. This worked out much better. Uh, so then uh, to add a little brightness to those sails, I'm using titanium white craft paint. Uh, and I'm just showing you, I, I painted the British flag at the same time. <laughs> Again, if you want to know how to make flags, I've done that in previous videos too, flags and sails. I have a separate video for that. I'm just showing you, I'm using that dry brush, and I'll just paint from the middle out uh, and just kind of uh, have the edges a little darker. I uh, kind of made streaky lines on it, uh, just so it looks a little off-white and not fully white-white, uh, uh, right? Uh, so now I am doing attaching the sails. So some of the stuff I just glued on. If there's a, a piece there, I would just glue it on with a tacky glue. That's what I'm showing you here. Uh, but some of them I actually had to sew on. So sometimes there's not a, a mast or anything to glue it to. So you have to you have to put it onto the uh, string or the uh, rigging that you put on there. So those ones you're actually going to have to sew on. Uh, so I just get a sewing needle uh, and I use a sewing thread for uh, putting the actual sail on opposed to the rigging that comes with it. It's a little easier to use uh, when you're doing these little little smaller holes. So all I did was uh, puncture the holes in there first with a sewing needle, and then I've threaded the thread into the needle and then pulled it through the sail. Uh, and uh, I just pulled the needle away, and then you're left with the thread inside the that sail, and then you just tie it to the rigging. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I also add some uh, glue to the knots as well. It just adds a little more strength. So here's some pictures of the finished ship with all the sails and rigging and rat lines, flags, everything in place now, and it's ready for action. So let's go back down to the table, check out that cool mat, and look at the ship in action. So on this island, it looks like we got Juan Corso's Corsairs uh, and the Spanish forces defending this island. Looks like he's got a stone tower and a pile stud fort, and he's got a bunch of ruins for cover. Ruins and jungle. Uh, he's got a docks over there with some lanceros on it. Uh, so he's got some interesting aspects on this island. I just want to show you the Fire on the Frontier manual one more time. Uh, this has flushed out rules for fortifications, so if you're planning on using that, uh, there is some rules in the original manual, but this one really uh, explains it uh, fully. Uh, and uh, I think it's a must-have for fortifications. Just wanted to do a quick shout-out for Thomas from No Dice, No Glory, uh, podcast Tales of the Sail, for painting up that little treasure chest for me, uh, terrain piece, and as well these Miliciano Indos. It looks great on the uh, battle mat here. There goes that hill we were looking at earlier. I really like that aspect of using this style of battle mat. Uh, putting hills underneath the mat opposed to a flat mat where you have to put it, build it up on top of the mat. It really adds another element to the game uh, and is uh, really an exciting uh, option. So let's look one more time at the schooner. I really enjoyed doing this build. It was a lot of fun uh, and I can't believe that this was just spare parts uh, you know, a week or two ago. And it really uh, came out great and I really enjoyed building it. I also want to do another shout out for Corey and the team at Cigar Box Battle for uh, sending over these amazing battle mats to the Plunder Den for us to try out. Uh, we will definitely be checking out more of uh, their mats out in the future uh, and really appreciate that. So if you guys like what we're doing here at the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first hand information when we start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.